Hello oh guys, <laughs> Rob about one here coming at you with my updated Elemental Hero deck profile. Now I have been putting a lot of effort and a lot of thought into how I want to build this deck, how I want to basically make this deck um, the best it can possibly be. And for that, for that, I have had to make a lot of changes, a lot of thoughts, and a lot of testing has gone into this, guys. Um, and honestly, I feel like I found the right formula, the right strategies, and the right combos to make this deck great again. Now, obviously, this is something that I built to be competitive, casual, um, and all the above. Uh, just have great combos, great casual play, great competitive play. Um, now, there are ways you can go around it where your combos will work, your combos won't work, and there's ways you can brick in the build, but every deck has that brick, and I feel like even though it has that brick, it's still a very combo good deck, a combo strong deck, that you can still do things even if you draw the one brick in the deck, but honestly guys, I feel like I found the best strategy for heroes in the deck in general, because this is... This is my deck. I've been playing it since it first came out. Uh, I've got everything as high rarity as I possibly can. And yeah, so I just love the deck and want to give you guys my full opinion on what I personally think of the deck and what I, how I feel the deck is what works. So without further ado, let's get into it so I can explain to you my reasons for a lot of these cards. So for starters, we play Free Solid Man. Uh, we play Free Solid Man because he is the new MVP of the deck. Uh, being able to just summon any hero from your hand gives you a lot of playability in the deck and just gives you a lot of ep windows to combos that you can do. Um, for instance, this card single-handedly opens up a Gumblar combo and a... Um, and a Dark Lord combo with a Nat Beast at times. So you play him at free because he allows that. Um, sure, you need to open up one other card to usually get to that place point, but uh, majority of the time, if you open this, uh, you are go either getting a Dark Law or you're getting a Gumbler or a Nat Beast or something of the like. Um, but yeah, you want to play free of him because he he's basically the door opener. Uh, free Shadow Mist because he searches every hero in the deck. Being able to just search every hero in the deck is very strong, very powerful, and giving you that window to be able to do that is honestly the most, be the greatest part about this card. And also seeing as when he special summon, he searches Mass Change to search to get into your Dark Law on your opponent's turn, then give you an additional search at the same time. Um, honestly, he is just a very, very good card in general because of that. Um, next. Free Vion. Um, you you have to play Free Vion now, honestly, guys, because he is he he lets you get into your a lot of your combos as well. You see that door opener that I said about a uh, Solid Man. He's the one that gets you the rest of the way. He's the one that either gets your Shadow Mist in the graveyard to search a hero. He's the one that gets the Polymerization out of your deck to essentially Fusion Summon or get a Malicious out of your hand. He is the one who can get everything started and everything rolling. And you need to play him at free because you need to see him turn one to be able to get all of your combos started. So he is one of the most powerful heroes in the deck and you need to play him at free. Wish that was Elemental and not Vision a lot of the time. Um, next we play free, uh, Destiny Hero Malicious. Uh, basically you have to play free Malicious now, uh, just for the fact that he's the one that essentially gets you into your link spam plays, he's the one that lets you climb the ladder, he's the one that allows you to go into your, like, Gumblar loop four card combo from hand, um, he's the card that allows you to do everything in the deck, so you need to play him at multiples and at the max amount that you possibly can. Because he gets you to that point where you are able to play the game. So you have to play free malicious because he's just the big boy that you can summon. Um, and we obviously play the Vion because he searches Polly and Polly gets this out of hand. So that's another reason. Uh, one Honest Neos because protecting Dark Claw from an attack, protecting any hero, being able to boost any hero for go, go for big damage and possibly game, um, he is there for that and you play him at free because of that. Uh, sorry, at one because of that. Plus, you don't want to you don't want to really draw this. You more want to search up like Shadow Mist. So I'd rather play at one than free. Um, one BLS because BLS is honestly um, broken in general and uh, if you searched it and you could search this off a of soul day so that makes it even more consistent so you play him at one. Uh, one summon a monk because um, 
if you open those awkward hands where you just open spells and then no other way to do anything, then Summoner Monk can just get you to a Dark Lore at least, and that's still decent on its own right. <clears throat> so, play one of him. Uh, one Attack Gainer. Now, we're playing one Attack Gainer because he is essentially a level 1 Earth Tuner that can be linked, synchroed with your Solid Man to make a Naturia Beast. And because of that, he's in here. Also, he can be summoned off a Soul Day very easily as well because he is a warrior. So I play him at 1, and he's obviously the Garnet of the deck, um, and you'd never want to draw him. Uh, because he gets you to that Nat Beast, because he gets you to those combos where you can go into a Gumblar and everything else. So you play him because he's able to open the door to those combos. Um, and then... To Ash Blossom because it's a hand trap, it deals with opponents, and it just stops stuff like Engage or like Hero Lives or anything like that to be able to stop your opponent from going further in their plays. Uh, those are all the monsters though. The monsters I feel are perfect. I have no issues with the lineup. Uh, solid, free Solid Man is great. I've sometimes debated playing two in a Goblin Bird because it obviously if you do open this then and a gob and you're able to get to a Goblin Bird then that kind of fixes the situation. But every other to every time I've wanted this more than I've ever wanted a Goblin Bird. So um, I prefer to play this there over the attack gate over the Goblin Bird in general. Plus he's more more consistently searchable because of e and stuff like that. Um, free Vion is just staple, and Free Malicious is obviously staple as well. I've obviously never had any problems with the build, and currently in testing, um, unless I drew this card, and if I drew this card, it was just like, well, um, I guess I lose. <laughs> but yeah, those are all the monsters. Uh, perfect lineup, no issues in general. Um, net for spells, we play Free Hero Lives. Um, being able to summon a hero from deck, such as Shadow Mist to get a Mars Change or a Solid Man to essentially go into your Nat Beast combo, um, really does come up at times. So you want to be playing free of this at all times so you're able to get to those combos. And yeah, you just play free of him. Um, uh, free Mars Change. Uh, be obviously you want to see this because it lets you go into your Dark Lore, it lets you go into um, Mar Anki, it lets you go into any of your masked heroes. So you want to be playing this at free. Plus this opens the doors to a lot of combos as well. So you play him at that at free as well. Um, free equal boosts the consistency of the deck. Search Solid Man, search Shadow Mist, search any of that to essentially go into more combos. Two Pot of Desires for those bricky hands where you just can't play the game, so you banish your 10 cards. Pray you don't banish all your good ones and then draw two to somehow win the game. Uh, one Polymerization because it's searchable with Vion and it gets malicious out of your hand. Um, one Upstart Goblin because 39 cards, why not? Uh, one Foolish Burial because if there's times when you... Sending Shadow Mist to the Graveyard without normal summoning Vion is very vital. So I felt like playing the Foolish Burial to send the Shadow Mist to the Graveyard to then add something like Solid Man or to add another or add Vion in general is just really, really powerful. So I felt like to boost the consistency of the deck slightly, I would play the Foolish Burial because it's basically another reinforcement of the army compared with the uh, Shadow Mist in general. So we play a Foolish Burial for that reason. Uh, one Soul Charge, Mars Summon from Grave to combo off. One Monster Reborn to summon and combo off. One Reinforcements of the Army to search our combos. Uh, one Phoenix Blade and one Living Fossil for our Assault Day Equip Spell targets. Um, and basically I play these because this one I recycle to get discard fodder for stuff like Gumbla, the Nightmares, anything like that. And this one is just another way to revive stuff because of being able to have that ability to revive a monster and just go even further can really come in handy so i wanted to play as many revive cards as possible and playing free uh was the bet was the best option seeing as this was an equip spell and comboed off with um assault so those are the equip spell those are the spells uh spell lineup is fine as well very consistent spell lineup like the only garnets in here are obviously just the equip spells and the polymerization but it's fine in general because even if you see one of the equip spells, you can still summon your attack gainer. And even if you still see the polymerization, it just means you don't banish to uh, summon a um, to get the malicious out of your hand to get it to your hand. So.
that's fine. And finally, for the traps, we just play free impermanence, more hand traps, more ways to stop your opponent during their turn, and just more ways to stop them from stopping you. So, um, yeah, I felt like free impermanence was just a really good card to own in the deck as well. So, yeah, uh, that's the main deck. I honestly have no issues with the main deck in general. Like, as I said, like, there's maybe... I might consider changing, like, the uh, a Solid Man for a Goblin Berg, but currently I just don't see the need or the point. Um, I feel like this deck is just works very, really, very, very well, being that it can stop anyone, being that it can make a big combo, and being that it's able to just open so many windows for itself and so many doors. But for the extra deck, we play two Dark Claw. Um, don't honestly think you need three because if you've made the third, you're honestly uh, in a lose. You're probably already in a losing position because you can't go any further. Um, but honestly, the two two Dark Claw is fine. Um, if you've made one, you're normally winning the game anyway. And if you've made the third, it means your opponent's just blown you out, and you need something to protect yourself. So. Uh, free dark, two dark lore is fine. Plus, having a macro cosmos on your board for your opponent only is really, really good. Plus, hand disruption at the same time. Uh, one Anki because it allows us to go for bigger damage and it can attack directly. Um, one Dyer because su you, summoning this of Solid Man gives us an extra card of the Solid Man and gives us a way to summon a monster from the deck. So, one of him. Uh, one Destiny Hero Dangerous be to be fusion summoned into only to get malicious out of our hand um, and give us more plays in that uh, that window as well. Uh, one Naturia Beast because uh, there's a combo where you can literally make Dark Lord Naturia Beast and this and Naturia Beast is just insane in general this format. Uh, one Abyss Dweller because I want to stop my opponent from using their graveyard. One Tornado Dragon because. And uh, I want to stop my opponent from having spell and back, row, back rows. Um, one underclock taker because there's times when there's times when underclock taker really does come up, and when those times come, uh, you normally win the game because of you have the underclock taker. Honestly, um, plus if you open a Shad summoner monk and you can't make anything else, uh, the underclock taker comes in handy because you can't make an assault. Uh, off the summoner monk so yeah plus we run one assault because i don't see the need of running more than one if you're only going to make it once so yeah plus he searches BL she searches bls and summons attack gainer from the deck uh one phoenix because um pop back row pop one unicorn because move anything one gamla dragon because we can literally hand loop our opponent uh for four cards um, one Borosaur because I want to attack the game, and one uh, Borolo Dragon because I want to take my opponent's monsters. Um, but yeah, that is the deck profile. Um, honestly, uh, the deck works really well. Um, I've had no, I've only had a few problems in testing with like when when you draw the attack gainer, when you draw stuff, when you draw like really awkward hands. But honestly, if, as long as you don't draw the attack gainer. You will nine times out of ten win, and that is why I thought I wanted to show you guys this deck because in testing, this deck has been working really, really well. I've had no problems with it outside of drawing attack gainer, and in general, it's a really good build to play. It's really fun. It's really casual and really competitive at the same time. You could take this into your locals and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna smack them up," and. I know, guys, there's a, there's expensive cards like um, Impermanence in here and Ash Blossom, but honestly, if you wanted, you could just uh, cut the Impermanences for more more equip spells, so you could summon something like Shadow Mist from the deck if you were sold. Um, you could cut the Ash Blossoms for stuff like Ghost Ogre, um, because Ogre is coming more and more back into the game. Um, like, there's a lot of things you could change in the deck to be able to make it more casual and more... Um, more casual and more budget friendly um, because obviously like impermanence and uh, ash blossom aren't the most budget friendly cards but there are ways to make it budget friendly as well but yeah guys um this is honestly my the hero deck profile that i personally feel is the best it works really well it combos really well um, it has its own combos and it can end on a board that looks like this <laughs> which is really really nice at times and uh, or a board like this, um, when and you've looped your opponent for four cards. Like you, your opponent, you can literally end on boards like this, and that's why I like the build, and that's why I like the deck. But guys, 
that's the deck profile. Tell me what you personally think of the deck profile in the comment sections below. Um, give me all your thoughts. Give me your opinions. Give me give me any thoughts you actually have. Maybe changes you would make to the deck. Maybe casual things that you could add in to you know make it a little more cheaper for you guys. Tell me all of that in the comment section below because I love to hear all the, your thoughts and opinions. And just tell me if you like the deck or not because I want to hear your thoughts and hear your hear any changes that you could possibly make to make heroes even better because that's my goal in life to make heroes better and make them competitive again um but yeah also don't forget to press the like button to show you that you liked the video and want to see more deck profiles from me um press the note press the subscribe button to be subscribed to my channel and see future year videos from me as well and don't forget to press the not notification button as well to be notified of any future year videos or streams that i do that are normally on thursdays uk time at 8 p.m um, and yeah, that's the video. Tell me what you think of this in the comment section below, guys. And heroes are the greatest ever made. I will make them great again at some point. Yeah, guys, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Robot One, signing out. Heroes forever!